okay? This is not something you want to do there, okay? It is relatively uh, safe to use. If it gets on you, it won't, it won't uh, burn you. It uh, will stain you. It's a reasonable etch time, and you use very little etching if you use what's called the sponge method. Uh, the exhausted etching does cause contain copper chloride, and this is an environmental issue. All right, so you don't want to pour it down the drain. Okay, all right. That's just how do you dispose it? Well, you can. In my case, uh, I keep it in a bottle and uh, a quart, like a pint like this, will last you years. Okay, and you know, I just have it sort of like a used thing. And then when they run one of the hazarded waste weekends or something like that, I just run it down there with all the dead USP batteries that I always collect over, the thing to collect all over the year too. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of this down in there. Where do you get ferric chloride? Uh, oh, you we were going to have all yeah. of that information. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I guess I'm not back. <laughs> I just donated a remnant of a gallon jug to the, to the club. Okay. Now this is just a, an old sponge. I'm going to Cut a piece about this size, okay? And I'm going to try and you guys slide back a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to take the take the, the, the chair around. Move one chair around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. rotate. Okay, uh, I'm going to no, take I'm this. And it takes a little bit to soak it up. And the one thing I always forget is to put the cheaters on. You mentioned that this I'm trying to make a good good impression for yeah. the our younger types. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned that it will stain you and that it's irritant, that it's poisonous if you get it on your skin. You well, need to worry about it. I always wipe it off as soon as I can. So I, I, I but I've never had. I, I have. I tell you what. I, I've had where I've gotten it above the gloves a little bit and didn't know about it. Was that I would end up uh, feeling an itch, sort of like a, you know something that you'd want to scratch, and that seems to be about the level of the, the irritation that I have now. What I'm trying to do, since this is a new sponge, is I'm trying to get him completely saturated with the etching so that he'll kind of like expand and get soft probably not the best sponge I probably should have used a sponge like that but this is the one I have okay. so now at this point you take your board and you just start wiping it okay. and you just Wipe, keep wiping it. Now, a way that you see a lot of times is people just put it in a vat, a, 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 a tray of water. And when you do that, you mean it a tray will, of the solution. Yeah, the solution. Yeah. And when you do that, you use a lot of a lot of the etchant. And the other thing is, you'll see that is it tends to clear from the outside edge to the center. When you use the sponge method, it'll clear from, see how I'm getting green stuff all over me? So it just, it's, you know, it is a little messy. Um, it'll actually clear in the middle first and then clear towards the, uh, <coughs> the outer edge. Doug, why would one use more etching than the other if you're removing the same amount of copper? Well, because in a tray you usually have to have it a certain depth that otherwise you just you tend to pour in enough so that you okay. can you know cover it. Yeah, it's and, a little tray. Yeah. yeah, if you had a real tiny tray, yeah, you know, it's possible, but like I say with the sponging technique and you can see how it's kind of like turning green on the sponge. Able to reuse this etchant once I use this etchant until, because of the environmental regions, I use it until uh, it absolutely doesn't work anymore. Now, for this, I 
I did put fresh at, fresh etching. But if you went to my house, I have another one of these things that you know has probably got a half inch of stuff in it. And uh, uh, there's another etchant technique that involves. Uh, can you flip the flip to the next foil? Uh, muriatic acid and uh, peroxide. Now this stuff, you know, muriatic acid, is another word for hydrochloric acid that's not quite as strong as hydrochloric acid. It will burn you. And I think that you know I use a much more aggressive safety gloves when I use that. Um, Why would you switch between them? Why, okay, the advantage of that, and I, I'm not a chemist, but there is a, a, you know, you can actually create a replenishing etchant using that system, and it's very visual. Otherwise, when the solution is green, it's good, and when it's bad, it's brown and you just pour a little extra peroxide in it and then eventually every once in a while a little extra acid and it will turn green again and you just keep, as long as it's green you can etch with it and you can keep doing that okay now let's see I need some help can somebody <coughs> bring that rinse water up here and for the next two no 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 no, no, no. This one. yeah that one okay. be careful it's, I don't know how tight the and if you'll take the top off. Okay, again, this I typically do by going out to around my back of my house and uh, you know, turning a hose on it. But, okay. Let's see, how can I do show this? Can anybody, everybody see that the center of that board, can you flip that light, twist it so that it's pointing out? No, no, no. You might have to hit the black button for, okay. Twist it so that it's pointed that way. Point that way? Yeah. This way? That way. Okay. Can everybody see where, the, where it is? Oh, yeah. 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 See how it cleared in the center? Yep. Okay. <coughs> so, I just... Now, at this point, I would just continue to twist it back down now. Okay. Um, just keep Work doing it. Work around the edge. Yeah. Work around the edge and get, get it clean. Now, you don't want to remove the uh, toner from the board until you're absolutely sure. Now, I did forget one little, <coughs> little thing to say. Let's say I found that the... the the pattern was had a small bubble or something in it, and uh, it was it was perfect except for this one little tiny spot. And I wanted to not want to go take take off the toner and redo it, which is pretty easy by the way. But if you wanted to do it, you can use a magic marker, uh, um, sharpie. sharpie, sorry, to touch up that part of the board. You know. My experience is that that is not an aggressive edge <coughs> when almost anything on the board will keep it from etching. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if if there's even the slightest information that there's something on where you want to etch it, get it off before you start because it won't etch. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty true. Are but you just gliding over that or you yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to keep it keep it saturated because it turns green and if it gets too green, it, it's not, it's just... So you're not, not scrubbing? Not scrubbing. So you I'm just, just trying to keep the solution on it. Okay. I find it works a little better if you heat it up a little. Yes, so it will I, etch faster if you heat it up. So I get a little hot water bath and put my etch into, into that to heat the etch up. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say that I typically do it room temperature. but. That's because it's I'm cheap, but I'm not necessarily, you know. I find this is real, like I say, once you've made a few and see them, see them actually come out, 
it's so exciting to see him. It's sort of like a birthday, you know, like a surprise. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, hey, it yeah. came out, you know. And um, so I uh, extend the delight. <laughs> yeah, it kind of <laughs> go cold. <laughs> so. Now, are those heavy duty gloves? No, these, but they're, what is that? Not neat, now, 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 nitrile. Nitrile, 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 I'm sorry, yes, they are nitrile. Yeah. Okay, uh, don't use latex gloves, they're not, they're not. Well, what almost. problems do you have with undercutting if you're using the thin boards and all that? With, I'm sorry? With undercutting. I, okay, um, if I, when you iron and press down, you tend to change the, the ratio of the pitch of space and, and width. You're, otherwise, you tend, your, your lines grow and your space narrows, okay, with this technique. Okay. So, undercutting has not really been an issue. Uh, the, the space is closing up has been an issue. Well, or the issue you said. It, okay, let me. Well, let me. That's probably worth mentioning that while we're sitting here waiting for this to happen. Uh, when I uh, when I uh, uh, do the set the design rules in the board layout, uh, my my default. My first starting point typically is uh, normal traces, 20, 20 mils wide, oh no, excuse me, 24 mil wide, and uh, space is 20 mils, and power lines and ground 30 mil, and uh, space is 20. I mean, that's just where I start off with. Now, it, like I say, if, if the auto router I look at it and I say, you know, darn it, if there's this, this component is too close to that component, if I could just get one more line through there, you know, I might drop it down to 15. Uh, okay. We've got one little spot, guys. What's this the look? smallest you've managed to? Uh, eight mils. You have done eight mils. Yeah, I've done eight mils. Eight well, and eight or eight and what? Uh, eight and, I want to say eight and ten. But uh, I don't use that except where I have to. Right. Yeah. And uh, I don't personally like to etch traces that go between pin uh, dip patch pins. Mm -hmm. And by setting that to 20 clearance, you'll never get a run between two pins. And so that's kind of like, I just don't think it's not because I don't think I can pattern it. It's because I don't think I can solder it. Be tough. Mm -hmm. What's the good percentage on your muriatic acid? What kind of peroxide do you use? Three percent or twenty? Uh, Three percent. I uh, I use the stuff that I get from the dollar store because that's the cheapest. And um, okay. can I ask you to do me a favor? Sure. Can you dry this board over there with this towel? Pass that around. Okay, here's where we are after the edge. So now that that's that's a successful board build. You could drill that and you could go. Now, obviously, we want to take the black stuff off, but I'm, but you're you don't have to go any further than this if you don't want to. Okay. Uh, okay. 
that's how much acid, that's how much edge was in there. Wow. And I can use that for additional boards. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's not like... Now, and I just leave the sponge in there, and next time it's kind of soaked up, I don't have to go through a lot of the stuff that we did this time. Yeah, and is there a particular reason you use that small sponge or a piece of a bigger sponge? I've had this sponge for a long time, and this is the last two little pieces left. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It's tradition. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, like the thing to do. All right. Right. Like thing to do. I can accept that. Now, I will, I'll tell you one of the things that I do tend to do at home, because uh, of spills, I tend to put my little red container inside of here and keep it in this all the time. <coughs> In fact, I'm going to, I don't know which one it is, but the water, so this is the action. So I always keep it like this. Yeah. And it sits up on a shelf in my garage. Okay, and that way it's sort of like uh, the oil tanks, you know, it has a kind of a whatever you want to call it around it. A moat. Yeah, a moat. <laughs> uh, so you've seen it eat through the plastic? No, I've never seen it eat through one of these things or anything. It's, it's not that, but I have seen myself get really messy. Because the more it drip down the side. Yeah, yeah, the more etching you have in there, the messier it is. That's why you want to kind of like use a little bit, only a little bit. All right. <laughs>